Start checking for witnesses and see if you can find any evidence around. I'll find an officer where we can use a phone. Okay, Frank. Can you give me a description of the holdup, men? You stay here and take it easy. The ambulance is on its way. Well, we've had three reports are still heading east. No, no, no. No, if they'd double back, we'd have them by now. Yeah, that's right. Keep them pouring in. All right. How many roadblocks we got set up? Nine, the big X's. The highway patrol cars are moving in toward the center. Well, they've got to be somewhere within this circle. But they can't get out. We've got to close in on them before they find a hideout. Tell you what, we'll start all of our units moving towards the center. Now, if any one unit Runs into him, have him block him off immediately, radio for help. These guys are killers, and they've got a small arsenal with them. Right. Frank, looks of this stuff they're using army equipment. The whole thing looks like a military operation. What kind of explosives did they use on that car? Some sort of gelatin. Gelamite, probably. What about witnesses? I got four of them, including the one who phoned it in. I have to start with him. Okay. Mr. Rodlander, please.
Thanks, bud. Mr. J. Mr. J, please. Hello. Your name's Charlie J, isn't it? Yes, sir. Sit down. Thank you. Now, where were you when this thing happened? Well, uh, I was in the parking lot. Uh, I didn't see very much. The, the buildings and everything happened so fast. Well, go ahead. Tell it your own way. Well, I, um, I heard the sound of shots, and then this guy wearing something over his face. It, uh, well, he looked like a man from Mars. It was a gas mask, I guess. Well, he had this machine gun, and he was spraying it all around. I didn't know what I could do, so I stayed right where I was. Well, you did the right thing, Mr. J. What happened next? Well, it's uh, kind of hard to sort out. Everything was so confused. Uh, let's see. Oh, well, uh, about that time, some girl, one of the secretaries, I guess, well, she came breezing along and headed right into it. So I pulled her down behind the car. I couldn't see very much from there. Well, thank you very much, Mr. J. We just wanted to get the overall picture right now. We'll get the details later. Thank you. Let's have the next one, bud. Say, Frank, you know, it may have looked like confusion to him. The picture I get, they showed nothing but precision. Yep. They had every move worked out. The prize was big enough. That payroll was $325,000. Miss Ingram, please. Miss Ingram, sit down, please. I believe you watched the hold up from the parking lot with Mr. J. If that's his name. But I sure didn't see much. He jerked me down before I knew what was happening. Ruined my nylons. Did you hurt your hand when he went down? I burned it. You burned it? On the exhaust pipe of the car. I didn't notice the motor was running and I touched the exhaust. I'd like to go to the infirmary if you're finished with me. Well, before you go, Miss Ingram, I wish you would show my deputy here where the car was. Uh, the car with the motor running. It was in the parking lot. I told you that. I know that, Miss Ingram. If you'll just show him where the car was. Thank you. girl pointed out the car. Gave it a fast check. Nothing unusual. Was it the car parked nearest the gate? Well, as a matter of fact, it was. Why? It was obvious, isn't it? That gang had every detail worked out. They knew where to go and when to hit. They even had identity badges to get through the gate. Those weapons had to be smuggled in some way. An inside van. But why this particular car? They wouldn't overlook a getaway car in case something happened to the original plan. And that car was set just in the right spot with the motor running. We'd better talk to the owner, Buck. We just did. Who? One of our eyewitnesses, Charlie J. Right. Wait a minute. Hello? Well, there's been a slip-up. It's got to be in that area. Yeah. 
Okay, stand by. Yeah. Well, they got away. The circle's closed. Two of our cars made contact, two others made visual contact. They came up with nothing. How's that possible? An armored car can't just disappear. No, this one did. There's still got to be some place in that area. I want a check made of every farm, ranch, building, I don't care what it is, till we find out where that armored car's hidden. I'll keep the roadblocks in place, tell them I'll be there in half an hour. Oh, one more thing. Put a hold on Charlie J, check on his friends and associates. <laughs> Morgan to control. Go ahead, Marshal. Uh, we just finished checking the Norton Ranch. There's nothing here. What about the other units? They turn up with anything? Nothing yet, Frank. Reports are coming in fast, and they're all the same. Negative. Well, they must have dug in someplace. Notify the other units to keep on with the search. Not to leave one rock unturned. Be a pretty big rock to hide an armored car under it. <laughs> They use radar? You said turn over every rock. There's only a question of time before somebody thinks to look there. Right. What do you got? Nothing. They didn't leave the calling cards. Maybe the boys at the lab will come up with something. Well, they switched vehicles on us and slipped right through us. People turn their motor off after they park their car. Now, look, I just pulled in. I heard some shooting. I got excited and I jumped out. Now, if that's a crime, arrest me. Well, the shooting took place approximately five minutes after eight, Charlie. Your time card here says that you punched in a quarter of eight. That means you were in the plant 20 minutes for the holdup. Yeah. Here, yeah, come to think of it, I guess you're right. I did get there early. Oh, oh, I remember now. I, I parked, I punched in, and I started from my bench, and I, uh, I suddenly realized I left my lunchbox in the car, so I went back for it. And you started your motor? All right, so I panicked. When I heard that chopper go off, I, well, the only thing I could think of was to get out of there, so I started the car. You were in the service, weren't you, Charlie? You got my army record right there in front of you. That's right. And you saw enough action not to get panicky. I was 20 years old then. I got much better sense now. Yes. You know a woman named Eve Ingram? No. Oh, uh, you mean that secretary? She was coming right into the action when you pulled her back. Now, how'd you do that from inside the car? All right, so I'm a hero. I jumped out and saved a life. It's not gonna work, Charlie. This woman swears that you were standing watching the hold-up all the time she's coming towards you. Now, the way it shapes up to me, this gang was going to escape in your car if they couldn't get the armored car. And you kept that motor running so that it wouldn't lose any time. How are you gonna prove that, Marshal? You know a man named Ernie Lawson? Ernie Lawson. It seems to me there was a man by that name who worked on the next bench. He was laid off. He was fired for absenteeism. He was your best friend, wasn't he? I knew him. I know lots of people. Well, you were in the army together. In fact, you used to punch his time card when he was late. A couple of times you checked him in, he didn't even show up. Do that for all your friends, Charlie?
Where can I find this, Mr. Lawson? Marshal, I have no idea. I haven't seen him in weeks. I haven't anything else to say. My lawyer will do my talking. Okay, Charlie. Well, his lawyer shows up, tell him what cell he's in. I'm holding him on suspicion. We're going out to Lawson's. This guy just might be mixed up in that holdup. Yeah. Morgan, the United States Marshal. This is my deputy, Mr. Johnson. Is your husband at home? Well, no, he isn't. He's in Los Angeles. Are you sure of that? Well, of course I am. I drove him to the airport myself. When was that, Mrs. Lawson? Last week, uh, Friday. We'd like to come in if we may. Oh, I don't understand. Is there any in trouble? If he's in Los Angeles, no. We'd like to make sure. Well, come in. Thank you. Now, if you just tell me what you're looking for. You know Charlie Jane, Mrs. Lawson? Well, yes, of course. He's a friend of Ernie's. How often do you see him? Oh, at least once a week. He comes by to play poker every Wednesday night. Yes, I'm waiting. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you very much. Lawson was a no-show. What's that? Well, what does that mean? It means he was holding space on the Los Angeles plane, but he didn't show up. I should have known. Know what? Oh, Ernie. He's a horse player. Spends all his time and money betting on the races. But he's always promising he'll quit. You'd think he'd learn. He lost his job at the plant because he was always missing work to go and play the horses. How did he make a living after he lost his job? What makes you think he made a living? He had an offer of a good job over there on the coast, but even if he'd gotten it... Well, they have racetracks too, don't they? Do you have any idea at all where he might have gone? He might try all the racetracks in town. He used to hang around with a bookie by the name of Ensor. <laughs> Magazine. Look, Ernie, you know you're always welcome here. But do you think it's safe? For who? You and me? Oh, for myself. I have no worries. But I am worried there's something strange going on outside. Yeah, what do you mean? Well, there's a man across the street. I know everybody. And this one doesn't belong around here. I think he's watching the house. I don't see anybody. Well, he was there. That's what disturbs me. <laughs> if there was somebody there, he was probably checking on you. Me? I'm in L.A. Look, Ernie, are you sure your wife isn't checking up on you? All right, all right, I'll go. All right, here's the setup. The man we're after is Ernie Lawson. I'm almost certain he's in that house. Now, he's well armed. He knows how to handle a gun. He's got a lot of money at stake, so be careful. Let's go. Ernie, they're here. So, look, Ernie, they'll be shooting, and I don't like shooting. Some progress, but not enough. 
Two of the gang are still missing. We haven't got a lead on the money yet. We can't tie Jay and Lawson in with anyone else. If any of you men got any ideas, let's come up with it. Well, Frank, I've been wondering about the Norton Ranch. What? Well, those hay bales belong to Norton. Well, Norton's in the east. Now, I know Howie Norton. He wouldn't be mixed up in this. Of course, Lawson's a horse player. Norton's got a string of horses. Gang used the ranch, there might be some connection there. Sure, they might have known each other from being around the tracks. But I'll take odds that Norton didn't know Lawson was going to use his ranch. Well, we could contact Norton. See if he knows who Lawson's friends were. What about Norton's nephew? I've forgotten about him. Draper, that's his name. Vic Draper. Spends a lot of time in Mexico racing some of Norton's horses. In that case, you'll need a visa. Better check and find out when was the last time he crossed the border. How long will it take you to do this, Buck? Two or three hours. Do it right away. In the meantime, I don't want you men to talk about Lawson. If those two know that he isn't going to join him, they'll head for parts unknown. Steward says he takes care of Draper's horses. Train them up north, race them a few times, and sell them off. Not as profitable as stealing payrolls, huh? Well, I've still got to prove it. I do know that they crossed the border five hours after holdup. And a horse truck would easily get through a dragnet looking for an armored car. They were both in the army together. Stoney was a demolition expert. But you need more evidence. Yeah, the payroll. <laughs> trying to do? What is this? What do you want? I'm Frank Morgan, the United States Marshal for Arizona. This is old Mexico, buddy. That badge don't count for nothing down here. Perhaps mine will do. I'm chief of police. Take a look inside. Same thing, Draper. We had to work it out, too. Let's go. Mm -hmm. 